Yeah, very good evening to you. And this is uh, quite early for me. I do say good evening because it's 21.32, so half past nine in the evening on Monday the 18th. And I'm doing the first repair in my new workshop. And on the bench in front of you, you can see pretty much what, uh, what I've got. It's a Makita dual battery charger. And the contractors have asked me to take a quick look at this because for some reason it doesn't seem to work properly. And I thought, right, okay, I'm going to have problems testing it because I don't have the right battery. But then I thought, well, let's have a quick look. And uh, it turns out the fault is quite obvious. Let me show you. This is the mains cable. And it's not connected. So I think I've found the fault as to why it's not working. Now, what I'm going to do, I've already taken the screw, well, they took the screws out for me, is I'm going to take the lid off. And as you can see, this is where the supply board is, and nothing is actually held in with any screws. Everything is completely loose in this unit. These are actually two identical power supplies uh, fed from a common output on the filter and the choke board, which uh, is quite a nice thing. It also has a USB outlet in the front so that uh, you can charge your phone while you're charging your batteries all at the same time. And rather than take this completely to pieces, what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to lift this board and I'm going to solder the back end. I think I'm going to get the compressed air line, I'm going to blow out the fans, I'm going to take as much dirt off it as I can and I'm going to clean up these, uh, these boards here just to make sure that everything's okay. And then I will resolder the live and the neutral. Now it, it's just a matter of these two terminals here. Unfortunately, because we're having all this work done, my bench is actually obscured by all the furniture, which is why I'm out here in the new workshop already. Just to prove that you don't need fancy tools to do these repairs, a brand new roller solder it arrived today, which is why it's not buried on the bench, a gas powered soldering iron, cigarette lighter, and one of my favourite tools, an original Leatherman Super Tool. This thing is 20, 25 years old, this one, and although some of the, the tips are broken and bent and not good anymore, it's still good enough for this job. So let's fire up the fire up the gas. There we go, that's nice and warm. Unfortunately, I can't get to my solder sucker, so I'm going to just have to do this rough shod like that. And like that. And because I'm some sort of degenerate animal, just going to flick the solder onto the, the concrete of the floor, like that. So we'll just do that for now, then we'll get the lead, and I'll just do the wiring, like this, live in that side neutral in that side
notice I'm actually soldering on the wire first to get the heat in to the wire and so that the flux actually melts through now let me just make sure that that's there, see it's not bonding to the pad yet now this is only the thin solder, I should really have brought out the the larger solder, this is only 0.7 mil in diameter I did buy more of the 1 mil so that would be the repair there so I can turn the soldering iron off and we'll just let that cool down over there and then I can clean up the residue from the board Right, now we've got to snip these off. Now this is going to be the wonderful bit because I can't get as tight in as I would do with a pair of side cutters. But I can still get in reasonably close, he says, trying to get in. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some big scissors. And we'll try it with the big scissors. One better. Rather than big craft scissors, we'll go with toenail scissors. Like that. And like that. So that's all off. That can go down like that. And the cable itself runs round from there, round there as a strain relief, and out the back, and round, round again. Obviously they make this because contractors are going to be using it, so they make it as awkward as possible for servicing. Let's just get a bit tighter on that so that will go around that corner. Like that, like that, just push it all in down. do is I shall just plug it in and wait for the bang. As you see we have green lights on both boards which are flashing because there's no battery connected. And that is about as far as I can test it because I've got no other, no other methods of uh, making it work. All I've got to do now, clean up the top, put the screws back in, job done. Now for those of you who might like to actually see the rest of the shop, let me get the camera and bring you around. Now we're on wide angle, as you see. Here we go. Let's just focus you in, make sure you're, you're there. That's, that's the end where um, most of the videos will probably be shot. Um, this area here will probably be computer bench or maybe the workbench. I haven't decided which way round I'm going to go yet. And if I come right round, go back past this wall. This wall I'm going to try and keep as empty as possible. And then we go round here. And uh, there's my existing computer. There's the furniture piled against the workbench along with the freezer. And we keep coming round and there's the doorway to the outside world with the concrete mixer. At the moment we've only got a single sheet of roofing on and the plumbing's yet to go in and the power's not in yet but uh, power will be coming in through this pipe here and there'll be somewhere along here there will be a full distribution board for um, a 60 amp feed for just this room. Behind that I can't actually move the, uh, the fiberglass there at the end but there's a similar pipe there that runs all the way up the garden to the base of the antenna mast and that's where obviously my antennas are and on the tower so that I will have the feeders coming in from outside. That's what the new shop looks like and uh, hopefully 
we shall see you very, very soon. Thanks very much for watching and we'll speak to you again. Bye for now.